Hello, so here we are, week 164, maintenance in the fish room for the 3,000 litre. So, let me just wet my whistle. Right, so, still got some issues in this tank. If you look at that, that's the picture of a dead clam. Might not look dead, but it's dead. So you came in one day, looked fine, came in the next day, gaping like that. So basically I took it out and it's it's gone. So there are obviously still some issues. I think it's probably bacterial. I'm pretty sure the clam is going to be some bacterial strain that it obviously doesn't like. And if I'm realistic, I think I'll probably lose the other two because I had four clams in here. That one I've just lost was my oldest. Six, six years I've had that clam, grown it from... Probably a third of the size it was uh, at the end, but that's reefing. It just sometimes, you know, it just goes a bit south. So that's where I'm at the moment. Still not entirely sure what the cause is. Most, 90% of everything here looks fine, looks happy. And, you know, I'm the same as every other reef art. I'm absolutely fixated on the stuff that isn't doing well. So my Satosa has got a little stripped edge on it. I mean, it's super slow. Well, I think it's actually stopped. So I'm hoping that it will slowly come back. The large, what I'm going to still call the barley slimer, had a lot of dead, sorry, dogs out there, um, had a lot of dead sort of coral in the centre, you know, just stripped off, and it was kind of, Kind of like STN, I guess. I think part of that was just because of the size of the colony and just getting the flow into the middle, which is kind of, they kind of die off around the base, don't they, as they grow up. So anyway, I mean, if you, if you look, I don't know where to put the pictures, one side or the other. Yeah, I took the whole thing. I mean, it was huge, actually, because in the tank, you go, that's a fair size. When you take it out, I was going to dip the whole thing in... Um, a red sea bucket and it wouldn't, it wouldn't fit in the top so i had to trim it all around anyway just get it in the bucket the other thing i've done is i bought this i did that classic well i bought this one so this is potassium chloride so basically this is what i do my coral dips with i ordered it and it said it was going to come in like two weeks or something and i was like that's not soon enough so i bought a little one Two different companies, one on Amazon, one on eBay, and they both, both turned up on the same day. So, so the one that said two weeks, I think, took two days. So, anyway, so I put, I can't remember how I measured it out. It was 10 milligrams there, yeah, 10 milligrams a litre. Yeah. So I put four litres in the Red Sea bucket, chucked in 40 milligrams there, and put the barley slimer in there. I mean, the good thing is I saw actually nothing come off of it in terms of, you know, flatworms or anything. But the time I chopped out, it's, it's difficult because all, all the tops were still live, but most of the stuff underneath was dead. So the time I chopped it off, I just, <laughs> just had a pile of bits, really. So uh, I just took out two kind of large chunks, which I glued back in. And... I mean, he looks very happy. He's getting a lot of flow as well because it's pretty close to an MP40. So I'm hoping that that will uh, take off and grow because they do grow quick. Yeah, it's a toaster. I can't really do anything because it, it's just basically on a rock, so I can't trim it or anything. So I'm hoping that it will just slowly grow back. Yeah, so that's where I am. So what... What are the possible causes? I think I already discussed it. I went away on holiday. I I think I actually said before I went that I was going to wait before I put that sulfur reactor online. But I put it online three weeks, I think it was, before I went away. Give it two weeks or three weeks. And I thought I had it dialed in and it was all good. But as always, while I was away, the flow rate, I don't know if it just got clogged up or what, but the flow rate reduced and so there was a build-up of, I think it's hydrogen sulfide that you get 
it if the, if the flow rate too slow. So when I come back, the top like third of the chamber, which should be clear water just passing through, is like a proper milky, cloudy colour. And then I smell, I smell the effluent, and it absolutely it just smells like rotten eggs. It st absolutely stinks. So I flushed the whole thing through into a red sea bucket until it rang clear. Adjusted the drip rate. And for the last week or so, it seems to have been perfect. So I'm hoping that that will be that. So I think maybe a combination of that. The other thing I've done, which, oh, I don't know, it's just, when you think about it, it's pretty stupid. But at the time, what I did with my bio pellets, I've got them in a D&D &D reactor, and they just bubble away with the flow rate. It's quite vigorous. And visually, I just go, looks good, looks good, looks good. And when I was trying to think back, when I actually put my beads in, and it was probably three months ago, if not longer, and what I, I realised is, it's not until you actually turn the flow off and let the beads settle, that you can kind of work out how much you've used. And I've used a lot. So what had happened is, obviously, the nitrates in the tank have been going up. I'm really rubbish at reading them Salafut test kits, the colour ranges. I need to buy an egg, really. But I don't know, I just, it's night. So I've never really been that bothered with nitrates unless I get, you know, insanely high, which is probably where mine got to. So, yeah, so I'll read it. It could be 30, it could be 60. It's just like, I'm like, it's too high anyway. So I put another 500 mil of um, the Bacto, is it MP Bacto pellets, the Tropic Marin ones. So I'm hoping over the next few weeks that everything's going to settle back down. Obviously, I had the temperature spike because the duct into the aircon came off, you remember? So I'm hoping that those combination of those three things is what's made the coral sulk. I'm pretty sure it's got bug all to do with the clam dying. I think that's just a whole different bacterial issue, which is in the tank. And I can't do anything about that, really. So I'm also doing some uh, large water changes. So at the moment, I'm doing a full drum a day. So I will probably do about a 35, 40% water change, which is going to be about 12 to 1,500 litres. Trying to think what I've done already. Yeah, it's pretty about 12. 1200 litres, 1300 litres, something like that. And it's a stonky water change. But I just, I just mentally, it just makes me feel better that I've done a big water change when I don't really understand what the problem in the tank is. So, yes, yeah, so I'm doing that. So, after this video, I will just do another whole, well, actually, not straight after video because I just took the water temperature and it's not quite up to 10, it's only at 23 tanks at about just under 26 now i think i've said this before but as the summer comes i let the temp the temp temperature in the tank just come up so i'll probably i like it to sit july august around the sort of 26 26 and a half and then i'll just it might get to 27 for a short period and then it it just drifts back down as autumn and winter comes. That's partly because I like to just adjust the temperature because I think it's a bit more natural and also it's just cheaper because I don't have to keep trying to cool the fish room because running aircon is expensive. Uh, so there's that. So I've just bought an ICP test just to check. I've only done that because there's obviously an issue in the tank and I just want to check there's nothing glaring, you know, glaring the obvious, any heavy metals or anything. I'm not expecting it to show up anything, to be honest. I bought some more pellets and I bought another 40 kilos of salt this morning. Oh, so I would have thrown that bag away. Oh, yeah, and I bought some, um, oh, I bought some super glue just because I'm... Um, used it all when I broke the corals up and stuck them back in. So that is where I'm at this week. 
yeah, so yeah, lots of water changes. I'll send that ICP off and see how that comes back. Put some more pellets in. Yeah, so I'm hoping. I, I mean, most of the tank looks fine. And the weird thing is, is those the two corals that are sulking are like generally very hardy corals. <laughs> now, Satosa just grows like a stomp normally. Well, most of it is because that's probably that's like a foot 14 inches across that Satosa, and it's got like a four inch 40 mil you know strip is about 10 mil wide right on right on that one edge uh, and then obviously the barley slimer grows like stonk normally so it's a bit weird that you know i've got a wild tenuous colony over the back there that seems to be perfectly happy i've got that fire and ice echinata down the end there yeah so i don't know so that's where I am this week. So lots of water changes, ICP tests, and hopefully just get the uh, get the tank back on track, really. But you know, this this is part of the hobby, isn't it? This is what makes it good. If it was just plain sailing and everything grew, it'd be boring, wouldn't it? We like the challenges. <laughs> Trying to lie to myself there, but yeah, it's just you know. You've got to concentrate on good if you can, but it's very hard to because all, all I do when I look in the tank is I see that bit of strip core and I just think, Brr. yeah, so I think that's about it. I think, that, yeah, the other thing, nothing to do with maintenance really, but I've done two live streams this week one with TB Corals, which was his first ever YouTube stream, which was good, and another on, oh, <laughs> I can't even say their name on this, Miss Reefy Az. F basically, I did a live stream with those guys, which uh, they are hilarious. Um, so yeah, so that, that's been uh, good. They're different live streams, they're quite nerve wracking when you first do them, to be honest. But I'm sure I will get better. Actually, you should read in the comments. <laughs> Can't multitask to save me life, to be honest. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, I'll try to think actually whether I mentioned last week that I nearly. I nearly killed like that end of the fish room when i was filling up my saltwater bin so i mix it outside in the ibc's and then i pump it into the one in the corner and normally i've got a kind of flexible hose that i just fix into place and then i just pump it then uh, and then i just turn the valve when it's full and i pay particular attention now because in the past i've Fixed, fixed the hose in, turned the valve, and then just gone, oh, I'll just clean the glass. And then before I know it, I'm like, what's that noise? And the whole thing's overflowing. But this time it was even worse. I, was just, I don't know why, but I just chose to stand it with the hose in my hand while I fill it up. And, I mean, it doesn't take particularly long, but it takes just long enough where you think I could do something else while I'm standing here. And I just thought, I thought, I can't even remember what it was, but I thought I need to do something on my phone. And I pulled my phone out of my pocket and I just let go of the hose of the other hand and it just, because it's under pressure, it just, you know, flew around the fish room and it just sprayed water all over that end of the tank, all over my MP60 controller, all over my aircon unit, all over the light stand that end. It just went everywhere. I spent, honestly, I spent about an hour just mopping up all the salt water after. It went all into the, um, like the grooves of the aluminium tank stand. Bloody nightmare, really. Yeah, I just let go of it. I was like, Christ, what are you doing? Yeah, so that was that. So, yeah, so this is just another another week in the life of having a 3,000 litre tank. So, other than that, yeah, fish are all good, fat and healthy, all seem happy. Convict tanks. It is still a dip, but not quite as much as he has been. Is slightly less. And I've got to be honest, because I'm dealing with the other stuff in the tank, he's kind of gone off my radar a little bit. So these two these two guys here kind of have this half of the tank. The convict tang tends to stay down this half of the tank more. It's just the yellow tang that's down this end of the tank. He's got a very small, very small section of the tank he's allowed to live in, really. But 
I mean, he still looks healthy. It's not like he's emaciated or he's, you know, he's covered in rips or shredded fins or anything, really. He, he looks fine, but it's just the convict tank just kind of partitions him down there. But, yeah, that's one of those future things. I keep thinking if I leave it long enough, maybe eventually, 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 he'll get bored and just realise that that fish is going to stay there and let him go there. We'll dream, can't we? Right, I think that's it, guys. I cannot think of anything that is remotely interesting to talk about. I am doing another live stream, so this will go out Wednesday. And at the moment, as far as I'm aware, I'm doing a live stream. I think it's 10 o'clock UK time, Sunday morning. And I'm talking about quarantine. Uh, once again with TV Corals. So if you're interested, check that he's actually doing it because uh, he might change his mind. If not, yeah, um, feel free to get involved and have a look and ask questions or whatever. Um, I'm not coming on there as some amazing authority on quarantine, believe me, but I will just talk about how I quarantine my, my fish. Yeah, so I think that's it. So I will see you in the next one.